come, come. Right now, I want to introduce you, Dr. Aluk. Please, doctor, can you join me? Please welcome Dr. Aluk hello, to hello, my hello, show. Hello, Regina. Good to see welcome, you. Welcome, 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 right. welcome, welcome, doctor. It's such an honor to be with you. It is for me not an honor for me. It is a blessing to be with you here today because your work is it's more than I can say personally because myself, I am witnessing in that. But before I dive too deep into the work, doctor, yeah. can you just introduce yourself to my public so they know who you are? So uh, I am a neurosurgeon and uh, I am director of the Neurogen Brain and Spine Institute, which has been set up for one purpose only. And that is to help our special needs children to overcome the challenges that they are facing in their day-to-day -day lives uh, as well as adults who have various diseases that cause paralysis. So my special interest is in the field of regenerative medicine which uses cellular therapies to help repair uh, brains that are damaged of our children that cause all the symptoms and problems that we see. Um, I've been a practicing doctor now for the last 30 years and <clears throat> All the work that we do is with one purpose only. How can we get our special needs children to lead independent, normal lives? So that's what we do. All our work is published in scientific journals. And uh, so far we've treated more than 11,000 patients from 70 different countries. So it's just a pleasure to be with you, Gina. Thank you so much, doctor. I hope you guys have heard him from his own word. They have treated 11,000 children, which is why I decided to bring him here. And let me tell you, for those of you who don't know me, I get to know Dr. Aluk because I am currently in India for treatment with my own son, who is autist, who has autistic spectrum. He has autism. I have been trying all different kinds of therapies. I got a little bit improvement here and there until I came to know about Neurogen, November, 2021. And that day my life changed. I was coming here, I never really know what I was expected. But when I came here, I became like, I, I felt like my mouth be like the huh? Like I open my mouth and let it open. Why? Because the whole process is not a child game. It is well organized. From the assessment to the, before they even start the stem cell transplant to the treatment, all the different scans, all the different program. I mean, it's a comprehensive program. And when I saw this, I'm like, this is what I asked myself, and that is why today, doctor, you're sitting in this chair. I asked myself this question. How come I never knew about this? So I said to myself, well, it means there is lack of information. And as I always tell you, my sisters, information no not share is useless. And because I don't want an important information like this to go, why mothers are out there, suffering, looking for help, like myself, looking for help, how to get something out of their children, and they are not seen, but there is hope. So that is why I decided, and I'm so happy doctor took his time. The pleasure is mine. To come here. So doctor, without any further too much wasting, I would like you to explain to mothers out there, what is, autism to you so uh, autism is actually what we call a neurodevelopmental disorder neuro and developmental neuro means the brain and development is a process that happens in all of us As after we are born our brain starts developing so there are many things that we can do the activities are with the mind and in the body now in autism what happens is there, is, there are parts of the brain that are not functioning completely. And we have shown this with special scans. And you've seen those scans. I see the PET-CD scans. 
you can actually see uh, there is this parts of the brain which are not functioning like normal brain because of this uh, the children have a you know complex of symptoms which include problems in communication which is the main then there are problems in socialization and then there are certain repetitive behaviors all of this combined sometimes into a certain amount of aggressiveness and hyperactivity and these children aren't able to go through a normal education system they aren't able to live independent lives right now these children on the surface look normal and that is why you know society has not given as much focus and importance to autism because when you see this child they look normal however they can't live normal lives and i say autism doesn't affect the child it affects the whole family yes because when a child has autism the mother's life apart from looking after the child almost gets completely sidelined you know the whole family's focus is only one how do we get our child to lead independent normal lives but the good news is that modern science research in biotechnology has finally come up with a solution that is making dramatic difference to thousands of children uh, who are on the autism spectrum thank you so much doctor i really like that end part that science is bringing something to help these children with autism can you explain a little bit because for example when i heard about you guys and i went to your website one thing draw my mind is the stem cell treatment for autism i have been looking for ways to help my child i've been doing physical therapy occupational therapy um speech um aba behavioral therapy and i see almost little to no progress so when i heard about stem cell therapy that was completely new for me so i said i need to try that so how can you explain that all right so up to now the whole problem was that once these children had this problem all that was done was a diagnosis was made and you were told there is no treatment just take rehabilitation we had not looked into and investigated the brains of these children okay so now we have technology we have very advanced brain imaging systems that can look into the brain and actually tell you which parts of the brain aren't working properly having identified the problem we can now fix it so earlier we were not even identifying the problem which you had was a scan ever advised for you you're not even seen that scan no no you didn't know what the problem was that is that is that is where i said you guys are doing something different here because my son was diagnosed autism at age 3 but the whole diagnosing process had nothing to do with ct scan mri ecg that i found here it was more about behavior is he talking check does he have eye contact check does he play with other friends check it was more about they observing the child how he is interacting with his environment so i i i'd like to give a simple example imagine if a child has a fracture of the leg a bone that's broken yes now would you give physiotherapy on a broken bone no you would not no. you would go to an orthopedic surgeon you would get him to fix the fracture he would put a plate screw plaster once the fracture heals now you give physiotherapy but you know what in our special needs children we are doing exactly that the brain is damaged and we are giving rehabilitation on a damaged brain we are expecting the child to do something his brain cannot do just like you cannot walk on a fractured leg how can a child speak have uh, understand and get educated on a brain that will not allow the child to do so in fact i feel sometimes it's not fair to these children that we are actually making them we are trying to make them do things that the brain is incapable of doing and what our treatment does is it repairs the problem okay the cell therapy that we do actually goes into the brain repairs the damage you still have to give the physiotherapy but now you're giving rehabilitation occupational therapy speech therapy on a repaired brain obviously the results are going to be much better 
which is that is that is that is the thing that I found so amazing with the neurogen way of of treatment. Because before I came here, I for those of you who know, I had to I've been doing so much research about how to go about this problem. Honestly, I I was already losing hope that there will be nothing because my son has to be has been in various i come from america for those of you who don't know in america there is robust physical therapy occupational therapy aba program and all that stuff that they are doing for these children sensory things but their progress i mean like year after year i feel like my son is the same or getting worse and then the worst part is then medication on top of it then the medication have their own side effects so I was in a point, honestly, that I, I, me and my husband was like, is this going to be our fate of our son that we will really, he will never get to talk or he will never get to stop clapping his hands or he will never be party trained or eat food like any other child? Because these things, we've been doing it for years and years and years and barely do we see any progress. So when I came here, which is why I was so shocked, is it started with your diagnosing process i when we went all the scans of the brains and ecg and all those stuff i sat down and then the day before you do the stem cell because my son if you guys don't know have had his first dose of first dose of stem cell the day before you came and explained to us what the brain was showing us a visible picture that day changed my life and gave me hope it gave me hope because I was actually for once understanding my son's exactly. disorder. Exactly. I was for once understanding what is actually wrong with this boy. Yes. Because sometimes I don't know if people out there, you don't know having a child with um, some disability is difficult because you ask yourself millions of questions. What did I do wrong? Did I this is it genetic is it this am i cursed you ask yourself your head doesn't stop spinning but that monday even before my son received the stem cell dose my whole vision my own point of view about this was different i stopped blaming myself i started appreciating my son every little improvement that he have done so far Absolutely. And I was so, so amazed with your entire team and what they are doing. Thank so, you. doctor, people will hear about stem cell. I'm talking coming from a place where I know there is a, there is a controversy about stem cell. Many people are afraid to try stem cell because they are thinking it's from a fetus, it's from a donor. Can you explain to people what kind of stem cell do you do here? All right. So, first we need to understand that there are different types of stem cells. Broadly speaking, stem cells can be autologous when you take it from the child and put it back in the child. So these are our own child cells taken from an area where they are good and put into an area where there is damage. The second type of cells are allogenic. That means they are taken from a donor. Now in allogenic, there are two separate types. You can take from the umbilical cord. So if at the time your child was born, you have preserved the umbilical cord, those could be used. And the other type is those which are taken from the embryo. Now the embryonic ones are the controversial ones because they are taken from the spare embryos of test tube babies, from aborted fetus, etc. So the controversy of stem cells was the stem cells that were used from, uh, you know, aborted fetuses. We do not use that at all. Okay. Uh, you know, unfortunately, because of the fact that Embryonic stem cells, those taken from the fetus, was banned in America by President George Bush, you know, way back, 20, almost 20 years ago. Uh, stem cells got this controversy. What people don't realize is that when President Obama became president, among some of his first executive orders was that he lifted this ban because he felt that this is a science that needs to be developed. However, we are not using those at all. Okay. What we are using is autologous stem cells. What we do is we take a needle, we put it into the bone just above the hip bone. It's called the pelvic bone. Okay. 
and we just aspirate the liquid from the bone which is called bone marrow it's a 15 minute procedure the child is sleeping uh, you know sedated no pain at all and what we have collected from the bone marrow we take it to our laboratory and there we sort of you know just separate separate the stem cells there's no artificial chemical no uh, uh, external agency just the child's natural healthy good strong cells from the bone taken filtered stem cells removed and then with a single needle we inject it into the fluid in the lower back this fluid is called cerebrospinal fluid why do we inject it into this fluid because the fluid in the spine directly is connected to the fluid in the brain so when you inject it into the spinal fluid it goes straight to the brain it goes directly where it is needed and what we have shown in over 11000 patients that we have treated is that the damage that is seen on the PET scans before the stem cells gets resolved after we have injected the stem cells. So in this whole procedure, there is no operation. There is no surgery. There is no cutting. There is no stitching. All we do is two needle pricks. That's right. Two needle pricks. You know what's a needle prick? Like when you collect blood, you do a needle prick and you collect blood. Well, that's all we do. One needle prick and we take out the bone marrow. One needle prick and we put it back. Okay. This is the simplest and safest procedure that there can be. And what are we injecting into the, into the child? Cells taken from, the own, from his own bone marrow. So we are using autologous bone marrow derived stem cells. We do not use embryonic stem cells at all. We don't even use the umbilical cord cells. We just take cells from the child and put it back into the child. So the beauty of this treatment, one is very simple, two needle breaks. Second, it's completely safe. And thirdly, the results are amazing and completely life altering. I, I can testify on that. Yeah. Guys, when they explained me the process, I was thinking, my sisters, that I will afterward even see the place that they put the needle. I will tell you something. My son was up two hours after the whole process was finished. And the reason why he stayed two hours is because he was under anesthesia, because they have to let them stay calm. After two hours, the boy was back to himself, jumping up, jumping down. There was no scar. There was no visible pain that you could see. He was fine. And they had this bandage over the area. So I was like, okay, when we move the bandage, maybe I will see something. I opened the bandage. When they remove it, you can't even see i wanted to take a picture for souvenir i can't even see where to take the picture that is how smooth the process was so doctor thank you so much for explaining that so i hope people have understand your type of stem cell now there is this amazing therapy that you do after the stem cell here there is not just stem cell, which is why I say your entire package is amazing. We did the stem cell, but it's not done. We are doing a HBTO, HBOT, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We are doing ozone therapy, occupational therapy. We have a psychologist. I mean, speech, name it. How did you come with this package? All right. So... Our focus and my focus from ever since I started my profession was how do we repair damage in the nervous system? My whole life is about that. And so stem cells was the most powerful tool that we had, but there are many other tools as well. So, uh, you know, now uh, along with the stem cells, we have a rehabilitation uh, system. Now, this is similar to the rehabilitation, which most of you have already got done. This includes occupational therapy, it includes sensory integration, behavioral therapy, psychological therapy, speech therapy, special education, physiotherapy. So there are all these therapies. Now, what you need to understand is that if the brain is like a computer, a computer has got hardware and a computer has got software. Now, the stem cell therapy, it fixes the hardware. Right now, our children are functioning with defective damaged hardware. The stem cell therapy fixes the hardware. The rehabilitation puts the software. All right. So rehabilitation is a very important part of the whole treatment process. 
Now, along with that, we are constantly trying to identify newer treatment methods that are number one safe. So for us, safety is paramount. Okay, safety first. So we will only take uh, treatments that are safe. And also, as a general principle, we believe in using natural healing systems. We believe that God has given on this planet all the healing that we need. You know, animals in nature, when they are injured or hurt, don't need any doctors. They heal themselves because God has given us everything. And everything we are using from the cellular therapy, which is, you know, our own cells, which we put inside, to the other treatments. And um, you're referring to the hyperbaric oxygen. So the oxygen is something given to us by, by God. It's nature, you know. Uh, what we have found is that when we give so there is this thing called hyperbaric oxygen. What is hyperbaric oxygen? Right now, you and I, we are breathing oxygen at one atmospheric pressure. At one atmospheric pressure, in our blood, there is a liquid called plasma and there are red cells and white cells. Okay. At one atmosphere pressure, only our red blood cells carry oxygen. The liquid in the blood doesn't carry oxygen. The white blood cells don't carry oxygen. But if we could give uh, oxygen under pressure, so we give it on double, it's called two atmospheric pressure. Now, the entire liquid of the blood takes up the oxygen. So instead of only the red blood cells giving oxygen, the entire liquid is flush with oxygen. And every nook and corner and cranny of the body and the brain gets highly oxygenated blood. This results in an overall improvement of the entire substrate. So if stem cells are like seeds, the growth of the seeds also depends on the soil. You take the same seed, if you put it in a dry soil or if you put it in a fertile soil, the growth is different. So the hyperbaric oxygen improves the soil. Okay, same thing with ozone therapy. So oxygen is O2 and we have something called uh, ozone which is O3. It's a more powerful activated form of oxygen. We have along with that a gut cleansing process because we believe there's a lot of connection between the gut problems and the brain. Uh, we have a system where we release physical pressure by deep tissue mobilization and acupression. And there is a complex group of treatments. All these treatments, they are referred to as integrative therapies together. The cellular therapy, the rehabilitation, the oxygen-based integrative therapies help in healing the brain using natural systems of healing. There is no drug that we are using. There are no medicines that we are using. In modern medicine, we've got so focused on drugs and medicines and surgical intervention. We use natural healing systems. Just enhance it medically. You know, enhance it. Take something good from here, put it there. Take something extra and let the body heal itself because this is safe and it is very, very effective. Thank you so much, Doctor. Before I continue, there's one very good question that yeah, is aligned sure. with what we are talking right now. Somebody asks, says that given there is genetic component in the disorder, so how do we make sure there is no expression of there is no expression of defect gene as the stem cells matured in the brain? Oh, that's a very good question. Now, uh, first we have to, of course, understand it is not that every child on the spectrum has a genetic problem. Yes, there is a subsect where there will be genetic issues, but with cerebral palsy, a big section of autism and others, there is no genetic problem. However, even if there is a genetic issue, you have to understand what we are doing. You know, uh, I wish I had some scans to show you here. There are parts of the brain which on the PET scan are hypometabolic. That means these, these parts of the brain are not working. And what we are doing is we are using our own body cells to repair the damage, okay? Uh, we are not trying to fix the genetic problem. We are trying to repair the damage caused by the genetic problem, if at all. So there's a difference between the cause and the damage, and we are trying to fix the damage because what we want is our children to be able to lead normal, independent lives. That won't happen till the brain is repaired. Now, the reason for using autologous cells here is because the brain, our body, is programmed to accept its own cells and it is programmed to reject any cells from the outside. Our body's immune system tends to reject anything from the outside. So technically, I mean, your question is very valid. What if you took donor cells where the genetic material was normal, for example, it, they, those cells, even if we consider they are better, the body may not accept it 
okay because we are trying to repair so my, my the answer to my question is we are not trying to fix the genetic problem we are trying to repair the damage caused by the genetic problems and that is best done with our own cells thank you so much doctor i think that explained the question so now given this explanation and given the stem cell there is this question that comes in mind hmm. uh, a mother just asked here and myself i have that question so when a child receives their first dose of stem cell when can a parent start expecting to see visible changes all right so what you actually start seeing some changes you know uh, within a week or so but they're very small changes the real changes you see at three months because the stem cells that we put inside when they when they go in first they release certain growth factors very powerful chemicals which are known as growth factors cytokines which have, which start a repair process so you see an initial positive response because of that then these cells the stem cells they convert into brain cells and then they go and populate repopulate the areas of damage and then they form connections this happens by about 3 months that is when you start seeing the real improvements you know Three months to six months is a phase of phenomenal improvements, way way better than you know you would ever have seen in your child uh, over over the years before. So the answer to your question is real improvements between three and six months. Okay. So now somebody also asks again mm -hmm. is like, so before the stem cell, we do the CT scan, all the scans of the brain to see how the brain is function. So. Do you do that later? Do you scan the brain again later to compare from where it was before the stem cell and where it's currently after the stem cell? Yeah, exactly. So what we do is we, at the end of six months after the first stem cell, we like to repeat the scan as and when it is possible because then we compare uh, the scan as it was before to the scan six months later because we found that the optimal improvements happen at six months. That's why we've kept the six month for doing a repeat scan. Okay, thank you, doctor. So now my other question is, does age affect this treatment? Does the child age affect the treatment or does it affect Absolutely. the outcome? That's a very good question. It's a very good question. It has a direct and a dramatic difference. What we have found is children below five have the best improvements. I mean, these are kids who go completely off the autism spectrum they go off the spectrum okay? wow. these are all kids who are less than five years and and this data is published in our scientific papers we've actually shown that the best results are below five the next best results are between five and about 10 11. actually it's before puberty puberty is a time you know when boy becomes a man he starts getting mustache there is mm -hmm. a growth okay. of the sexual organs mm -hmm. growing hair what we found is that when you treat the children before puberty, the results are very good. Moment puberty comes in, which is a, which happens now anywhere between around 11 years, uh, because there's a flush release of male hormone testosterone. Mm -hmm. The results are a little lesser after that. Uh, and as age advances, the results become even lesser. Uh, once they go beyond 20, the results become even less. However, it's not that there are no results. Uh, the oldest uh, autism person I've treated is 38 years old, and he also had, you know, quite significant improvements. But the improvements become less as the age advances. Therefore, the need to do, what, you know, early, it, diagnosis. early diagnosis and early treatment. Uh, this whole thing of early intervention is very, very important. But, and this is not just true of autism, it's true of anything. Take cancer, for example. Yeah. You, you diagnose cancer early, you treat it, you can cure it. Yes. The same person that uh, cancer is diagnosed after several after years, and you, 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 can't, you can't cure that yeah. despite everything else. It's true of everything, whether it's diabetes yeah. or you know, any uh, kidney disease or any condition. It's true. The earlier you treat, the better, the, better the, results. the results. Thank you so much, doctor, for that explanation. Now, I want to after I think we've talked a lot about autism. I know you also do cerebral palsy. That's right. Can you, no, I'm sorry, I'll come back. I want to ask something about autism that I, I, I kind of forget. Is autism, when the lady talk about the gene, is it genetic or is it, what is the cause of autism? Now that is what I call a million dollar question. Okay, yeah, because, because the causes been... are so many, okay, uh, possible causes, all right. 
and uh, they could start from like i said genetic defect is one but that's a small part okay mm. they are they are identifying some genes which could be a possible cause it could be things that have happened during pregnancy right uh, very often it is a traumatic birth process in fact a lot of the children we are seeing um, we have found that they've had difficult they've been the, you know the children have been born prematurely like like, like my son kids, yeah, yeah. So a lot of children who are born prematurely, or who after birth, you know, have had, uh, you know, respiratory distress, or you know, jaundice, or they've been incubators for a long time, where the initial few days were difficult. A lot of them also develop symptoms, uh, you know, on the autism spectrum. Uh, and then there is later. Okay, now uh, uh, there are many things. Some of them are controversial. You know, there is this whole thing about. Uh, you know, do vaccines cause? There was this whole thing about MMR vaccine causing autism. So I must say, at one time, I thought about that too. But yeah, yeah but so no, there, there. I mean, uh, there was a paper by Dr. Wakefield that actually meant, you know, studied that, but then that paper had to be retracted. There are several other papers now that show that there is no direct relationship between uh, vaccines and autism. I'm so happy but, to but, hear that. You know, but uh, uh, although that's a controversial area our advice to most parents is please do all the vaccinations okay because there are many conditions which we have got control over simply because uh, of vaccination so let's not stop all vaccinations you could be selective okay you could be selective about which vaccines to take but some parents just completely stop all and then that that could potentially cause problems but this is an area that's really controversial there are very strong views on either side we have a lot of parents who come and tell us the child was doing well after MMR vaccine, there was a regression. Now we don't know, was it the vaccine? Was it just in time? Because you know, the vaccine is taken at the time when most of the time you see symptoms. So we don't know about that. Having said that, uh, one of the things that I wish to emphasize, we believe among the other things that we've seen, one, uh, older fathers, you know, when, you know uh, when a father's age is 40 plus or more, the, again, the chances of uh, you know having autism become more because of uh, changes that happen in the sperm of the father. So old because what's happening now? Earlier, people are having children at a younger, younger age, age, and now everybody's having children later. Yeah. So that is one possible cause. We need cause. to find money first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, then, uh, of course, the health of the mother. Now, when we talk of health of the mother, it is known that. Uh, you know, we focus on the physical health. We know that mothers who have, you know, diabetes or who have, you know, other mothers who smoke, uh, you know, all of them, the, the incidence of possibility of, of uh, autism is more. What we don't focus on is the emotional health. Okay. I believe the emotional health of the mother is very, very important because we just, we, we think health is physical or the mother is healthy, but mothers need to be looked after emotionally during pregnancy. They need to be happy mothers. They need to be taken care of. Very often with today with mothers having to work, having, you know, uh, pressures of society. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because, of, you know, when we when we are looking at, you know, and we are studying, you know, we are, we are studying all our patients, we actually look at what causes. And we believe that the mother's emotional health is very, very important. There are some other things, for example, the excessive use of mobile phones, because, you know, mobile phones uh, release a certain radiation. And, uh, you know, uh, the incidence of autism has completely gone through the roof uh, ever since We've had mobile phones and we don't know whether that radiation could have some we don't know it's not proven yet mm -hmm. these are just theories but the point i'm trying to make is there's so many it's theories. so vast yeah. it's, it's so vast. vast there's you know there's heavy metals there is the you know the the fast food the, the junk food that we eat earlier yeah. uh the food that the mothers eat uh you know earlier it was mothers breastfed their kids for six months nowadays mothers are putting children on uh, outside That's food much food, earlier. Yeah. The digestive system of the child is not programmed to take anything except mother's milk. So when you start that, so there's so many factors. And I think, you know, that that's a topic all by itself. Oh, yeah. uh, Thank you. But my me. advice to parents is let's not look at the past. Whatever caused it, here's our child who's with us now. This is his person. Let's try to help our child now without trying to look at what happened in the past. Because looking at the past is not going to help us at this point. Yes, so we need to look at we need to look at our child the way our child is now and say okay what best can we do that is safe and effective that can give our child an independent life so independent life is the word that is what i came in for to give my child independent life so doctor as i am as we are talking now i was just thinking about something it's like 
does this treatment for autism, you know, the autism have various different levels. They are mild, they are moderate, they are severe cases. Does it help with every cases? Is the treatment the same yes. for everybody? Uh, no, the treatment is modified, of course, slightly, depending on how, how it is. I mean, it's just the principles are the same. You know, mm -hmm. the, the way we approach it, the therapies that we do are slightly different for each. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, it is the same set of treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what we find more than severity is the age. Okay? Okay. So, a younger child, even if it is severe, is likely to do better than an older child who is milder. So, age is the primary thing, not so much the severity. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Now, how, let's say, what can a mother be looking? Because right now, I know many people watching this live right now, we start monitoring their children around the place like, oh, is it different? Is it that? Is it this? Is it that? What can you tell parents to like watch for their child if they have to be paying attention of whether they have this, whether they are autistic or not, whether they are normal or not? So one of the things that we see uh, in, the, in the beginning, uh, what you first start noticing is they don't make eye contact. You know that it starts with that. Then you find that they just tend to uh, they tend to live in their own world. You know, I mean they are there in the world, but they tend to be you know by themselves. You find that they don't respond as well to their name. You call out to them and they are not responding. You know, then you notice that they're doing some repetitive behavior. They take the same thing and keep repeating that behavior. You know, even if it's not accomplishing anything. So if you start noticing, but eye contact is one of the main things. So if your child is not looking at you when he's talking to you, he's not responding to your name, he's doing repetitive behaviors, uh, he's not able to socialize and mix with other children of his own age, you know, then I think we need to be worried and concerned. If your child, you know, gets aggressive or hyperactive because they sometimes, you know, they will just start scratching themselves or biting or, you know, there's head banging and those are a little more severe. By that time, you've already taken medical attention. So any behavior that is a deviation from what a child of that age should, because the, on the spectrum, there's a whole lot of, that's why we don't call it autism anymore. We say autumn spectrum disorders. Yeah. There's an entire spectrum there. There are kids who are low functioning, there are kids who are high functioning, there are kids who are verbal, there are kids who are non-verbal. There, there, there's, there's a various right. permutations and combinations. Mm -hmm. But the three main issues are communication, socialization, and repetitive behavior. You know, it's, it's some mixture of these three. Thank you so much, Doctor. I was just looking um, for another question here, but I think we will move on. Yeah. Now, I I came here because my son is diagnosed with autism spectrum. But when I came here, I was amazed with the little kids that I found here, the little children that they are doing this intensive physical therapy. And when I asked, I realized that you also do treat children with cerebral palsy. That's right. Can you give us a little bit of understanding about yeah. that? So in cerebral palsy, uh, the brain damage is a little more severe than that of autism. It's much more severe. Uh, the damage is more extensive. It's, you know, on both sides of the brain. And like I told you, the brain controls higher function, that is attention, intelligence, speech. It also controls the body. So in cerebral palsy, you see changes in the body. So what you find is that their limbs, the hands and legs are tight. They aren't able to move. They aren't able to eat food. They aren't able to stand. They aren't able to walk. Very often they have wheelchair existence. So in cerebral palsy, the damage is more in the body. Uh, I mean, the, the you see uh, the, the uh, you know effect more in the body. Unlike autism, where their body is completely all right and it's only the higher function. Uh, stem cells work just as well in cerebral palsy, and we get very very good results you know our, we are able to get almost all our children off the wheelchairs okay all our children who are on wheelchairs they stand they walk they get use of their hands again they're able to feed themselves and we're able to give them functional independence they're able to wear their own clothes they're able to you know do you know the basic uh, you know uh, personal care all of that so you, we see wonderful results in uh, cerebral palsy as well Thank you so much, Doctor. I was amazed when I when I first visited your uh, went to my son first physical therapy. There was just it was like a, I'm like what? And then and then the, the most amazing thing is you see the ones that are just the beginner who they are just starting they can't even put their head up. And then you look around. There's another one already walking. There's one already walking, and I'm asking like I asked the physical therapy, was this child like this? Yes. Just like when I see the, 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 the children with um, 
uh, with autism spectrum. Um, thinking about that, I'm coming with the autism spectrum. I will see some of them are talking, some of them are not talking. Um, some of them are, are able to do some things and some of them are not able to do something. So when I'm looking at the different diverse of autism spectrum kids, do you, when you're doing your treatment, do you make any kind of modification based on how function they are or based on how old they are? Multiple. So um, on, on what function they have, how old they are, it depends on the body weight. So it depends on multiple factors. You know, there are multiple factors that decide uh, the stem cells we use, the number of stem cells, how we do it, the rehabilitation process, the integrative therapies, you know, uh, what other issues they have. So our, our treatment is sort of designer, it's individualized to each. That's why we have a very elaborative uh, evaluation process. Uh, you notice here each department does its own evaluation. You know, the psychologist mm -hmm. will do it separate, and the occupation therapist and the speech therapist separate. We have all these scans. All of that gets collated, and then you know we we, we look at all that, and then we decide, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And the injection of stem cells also is sometimes different. Some, you know, in there's there's a condition called muscular dystrophy where mm -hmm. we inject the stem cells into the muscles. You know, not uh, I mean apart from mm -hmm. the spinal fluid. Mm -hmm. So where we inject the cells, how we inject it. All of that changes based on the diagnosis. That is so good. I'm so happy that it's individualized. It's completely so it's, individualized. I mean, so now, then my question is, some people will be wondering, is are there any effect effects of this stem cell process, like side effects that are crazy? Okay, so the only significant side effect that we are worried about is children who have a history of epilepsy or convulsions, or whose EEG, you know, the EEG, EEG that we do, mm -hmm. yeah, that is abnormal. Uh, there is a 6% possibility, 6% that they may have a increase in epilepsy after the stem cells. 6% is 6 children out of 100. Okay, uh, It's not a very large number, but it's significant. So that's the only possible thing. And what we do is, uh, you know, after we discover this, uh, okay, just to let you know that all our work, all our results are published in scientific papers. So we have now over 107 papers. In fact, the world's first scientific paper on the role of stem cells in autism is published by us. The second paper came from China, the third from Italy, and the fourth and fifth paper have come from uh, the Duke University in America. So we are the first to publish it. And we have a total of 15 publications. So we've published our good results, but we also published a paper on the adverse events. Most people don't like to publish their negative results, but we've yeah. got a scientific paper adverse events of cellular therapy. We've let the whole world know that this is something which can happen. Now, because we identified it, we documented and told the whole world, we also found solutions. What we found is that if a child who's at risk, mm -hmm. if you add an anticonvulsant medication for three months, you reduce that risk significantly or completely. Correct. Yeah. So this is this is this That's is cool. the <laughs> See, this is the advantage of being honest and transparent with your own results. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to, very often, you you know, the side effects and negative results, people try to brush them aside. You don't want to look at it. We look at it. Okay, We look at it, we identify it, we publish it, and we find solutions for it. Right? So, with with uh, with this, when we add, and because this risk period is for the first three months, you know, it doesn't go beyond that most of the time. So, we cover with a medication for three months. And with that, we are able to bring down even this. This is the only adverse event that, uh, you know, is worrisome. Apart from that, some children may have, uh, you know, a certain headache after the treatment. You know, they uh, they may have uh, some pain at the side. But these are very minor. This happens only during the hospital stay. It lasts for a day or so and then it gets settled. These are very minor reversible things. But there is no patient of ours who's deteriorated or become worse because of the stem cells. Uh, we've had a zero infection rate, more than 11,000 patients, and nobody's ever had any kind of infection or deterioration. So I believe it's a very, very safe treatment. And even the adverse event of uh, seizures, it is something which can be managed. It's not something irreversible. With medications, it can be managed. Now I understand why they did ECG to my son. Yeah, exactly. To, to identify. To identify. Yeah. So that's called EEG. The EEG. ECG is for the heart. EEG, EEG is for the brain. Yeah, EEG. So we look, we, we are anticipating a problem, okay? We are looking for it and trying to do preventive things. That's what we do at our institute. And, and, and that's because, you know, we are the only stem cell therapy center in the world that treats only neurological cases. All the other stem cell therapy centers in the world, they treat everything. 
you know, a kidney and orthopedics and cosmetic and, you know, like everything. You go there and they treat everything. We are focused on neurological only. Okay. So everything here is driven, motivated, inspired by, focused on neurological patients. Our entire staff is trained just for this. So that's that's what makes us slightly different. And again, we are the only stem cell therapy center which has this comprehensive plan. Like stem cell, most of the places you go, they give you stem cells, you go home. Yeah. We have a rehabilitation. First, we have the evaluation. We yeah. have the stem cells. We have the rehabilitation. We have the integrative therapy. Everything that can possibly help our child that is safe and effective and scientific. Because all our work goes into scientific journals. I'm really happy to hear that. And then the follow-up too. Oh, yeah, we have a follow-up. So once we treat, uh, one of the things that we attempt to do, we, we, you know, we are still in touch with the patients. We, we, I started stem cells in 2008. We are still in touch with the patients we treated in 2008 and 9. You know, we, we maintain a contact. You know, we will, what we do is once you come here, you realize there's a case manager appointed to you. Yes. This case manager now will be in continuous contact with you. Every month you'll get a WhatsApp message or a call. We'll keep a check. How's the child doing? Uh, are there problems? Are there issues? You know, and you will, so after you go back, you're never left alone. They're going to be there with you, right? Uh, we do video follow-up calls. We, you know, we, we continue to monitor, even if everything is okay. We have children who are, now our child is off the spectrum. Our child is, uh, because, you know, after we have children who are off the spectrum, they are now going to normal schools, they, who are in special schools, they're able to talk, they have kids who are graduating. But we will still say hi, hello once in a while, just to check how everything is going. So that's what we do. A uh, very vigorous follow-up of all our patients. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this explanation. Now I'm just going to read one, some few questions here, which um, I think um, somebody asked the question here. Is the procedure available or affordable for most people? So, uh, see, there is a certain <laughs> standard price of the procedure. But however, we have a, a social work department. Okay, uh, now, You know, when I started my organization, uh, apart from the medical side, we had two. We had a research department because we are very research focused and we had a social work department. Now, we have a policy. No child should ever be deprived of the treatment because of financial reasons. That's our policy. Now, as part of that, for example, we have a, a corporate social responsibility. All orphans, any orphan where both the parents are not living are treated totally free of cost. Okay, any orphan child. Then, uh, children who come from very, you know, from small villages, tribal areas who have no resources. What we do is we have a social work department that, uh, you know, looks after them. Mm -hmm. They try to raise, they, they help them to raise certain resources. And then at very reduced and discounted prices, uh, they are offered the treatments. Oh, right? So, so uh, but, but they're supported. We don't just say, you know, we give them documentation, we tell them where to go, we give them addresses of trust, and we, we help them to collect a certain basic amount of money. So, everybody who comes to us, we never tell anybody, oh, you don't have money, go away. No, you know, we will try to do whatever we can. Okay, we can help many people. There are some people we can't help, but we try to offer the treatment. So, whoever comes to us, once you reach us, we try to do everything that we can to help you. Okay, so people, you have here that was a question somebody asked. Another question somebody said, if the child is three years and is still cannot talk and tumbling until he cannot coordinate movement, no walk properly. I don't know what do they mean by that. I think yeah. they are trying to say if the child is not walking by the age three well or is not talking. Yeah. Should somebody start getting worried about that? Child? Yes, absolutely. A child who's not talking at three years, you definitely have to be worried. Okay, this child is likely to be on the spectrum. Very often, these kids they have what is called toe walking. You know, they they have a difficulty in walking, so they tend to stumble. They have some gait issues as well. Uh, so yes, at three years, a child who cannot talk. At three years, a child is having difficulty in walking, definitely needs attention. We need to investigate, we need to do scans of the brain, we need to identify you know, what parts of the brain are damaged, and we need to address it because it's, it's three. Uh, he's still in the optimal age. Below five is the best time to do it. So we should wait till he becomes older. Uh, we should investigate, and if there's a problem, we should fix it with our treatment. So somebody says, so can this be advice to any woman who have a baby with cerebral palsy yes absolutely any absolutely. child any child with cerebral palsy 
Of course, uh, so we have a restraint. Our only thing is body weight. The child should be more than 10 kilograms. So if the child is, we don't have an age limit. There is a weight limit. So if the child is less than 10 kilograms, then we advise them to, you know, especially feed the child and get the weight of the child increased. Uh, they have to have basic, you know, their thing. We check the hemoglobin. We check that they should have a baseline kind of hemoglobin, health. healthy child. Mm -hmm. They should have no active infection. They mm -hmm. should be having no severe cough or fever or anything like that. Uh, that's it. You know, more than 10 kilograms, uh, a normal hemoglobin and no active infection, uh, we can treat. So good. Um, uh, somebody already, I think I already asked that one. Now, there was another question here that I want to go, I want to go about it. Possibly, somebody asked that, Neurogen, is there any other country? Is it in Africa? Is it any other country that people can go? Or are you just based in India? Right now, we're just based in India. Okay. Uh, but we do have plans. Uh, it's going to take some time. Uh, we are planning to, we are very, in a very advanced stage to set up a center in the Bahamas. Uh, so there'll be one there that may help patients from America, but that, that's going to take some time. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at uh, a center in Africa. Um, we're looking at something in Mauritius. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are... It's a so work in progress. It's work in progress. This is taking time because there's there's a lot that goes into it. That there's government permissions. You need to set up the infrastructure. You need to have trained people. So there is work that's happening. But it's, it's my intention that, you know, there should be one center in each of the continents. So there should be one for the Americas and Bahamas. There should be definitely one for Africa uh, and maybe one for Europe. So that's, that's our intention. And we've been working on it. And, uh, you know, we are, we are, we are hopeful uh, because in Africa, there is uh, the, the number of children who are affected by neurodevelopment disorders is really, really very huge. And they do not have access to rehabilitation. You have to understand, you know, that we, so if, if you have a brain damage, you have autism, you have cerebral palsy and you're not getting rehabilitation, these kids get very, very bad over a period of time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, I, I, my first visit to Nairobi, actually, you know, um, you know, visited, uh, I had somebody known to us who requested us to see and there was a child who was, you know, used to be tied up in chains at home. I mean, he was so aggressive and violent and, you know, he would be somebody who would break through the windows and the parents said, no parent wants to tie up the child mm. in chains. They Tell only do it that. if they have to do it. Uh, and, you know, that child we treated and he's become so good. Oh my God, it's so amazing to see him. He's become so cooperative. He's so nice. Now he's going, going through a normal education system. So, you know, a child were to be tied up in chains because you know, so he's now, you know, leading a close to normal life. That's the magic of stem cells. So somebody was asking here that, um, is it in Cameroon? For you who ask that, is it in Cameroon? He already answered that. As for now, unfortunately, we only have neurogene in India. But I can assure you guys that people from all over the continent has been coming here. Actually, yesterday I had a sit down with some ladies, which I will say that video later on. We were from five different continents. We were from America, from Asia, from Africa, from, um, Europe, from Europe, from Australia. People from all over the world have been coming here for treatment. So somebody asked your doctor that, does this treatment help the picking eating for children who are autistic? Because autistic um, children with autism spectrum tend to be picky eaters. Does it help them as well? Oh yeah, it helps. That makes a dramatic difference. Right? One of the main improvements in these kids, one of the <laughs> is, is, is that the eating completely improves. You know, they start they start eating a wide variety of food where earlier they were only restricted. This is one of the most important improvements that happens. I I, I can answer that question for my sister who put that question. My son got his um, stem cell is less than two weeks now. The one of the first changes I saw was sleep improvement and then now eating improvement. My son had four food that he was eating before we came here. But now the other day I even took a video of him eating rice by himself, holding the spoon and putting in his mouth. I was like, oh my God, what am I seeing here? <laughs> He is now interested in other food. He can eat vegetable. This boy never wants to see any vegetable. Now, peas is one of his best vegetable. Mm -hmm. He is eating tomatoes, onions, stew. He ate stew. He ate fish. This boy never ate any protein. So, for that, my sister, that one, I can say that I have seen that personally for my son. And so, I am so happy you came here. I am so happy I came here, doctor. I am 
so happy for what you are doing for our children. You are indeed giving parents hope. It's so hard for, I don't know, I think you have heard this so many times now, you've been doing this quite a while for parents just literally seeing you and don't know how to even thank you because of their overwhelm with joy and they are overwhelmed with happiness of just the little improvement they see. And and these are parents, like I was talking yesterday with other ladies from different places, and we are just having our first shot, but just the little improvement that we've seen so far, we were just amazed because for people who don't have children with some kind of disorder, you will not understand how important, how important a little bit of change in your child's day-to-day -day activities up it's it's i say it is like they take cold water and throw your body on a winter day where it's very cold but you don't feel it as cold because when you see that little change that water becomes automatic refreshing not cold in your body it's so overwhelming joy you you i'm looking at my son now i'm just like Every day I'm, I'm throwing a little bit of investor, in, uh, like investor Derek, what's new? What's new? What's new? And you just have that hope and you see those little changes and you are just so, so excited. Dr. We, I can thank you for the whole world for just putting in that time and putting in the time and for more importantly, not letting any child go away. Yeah, absolutely. Not refusing any child because they don't have the means you accept everybody. And for you guys who are listening, if you are in a different country and you're wondering if you want to come to Nilojin in India, let me just tell you. The process of from intake to your visa to everything, they follow you step by step. They give you all the information you need. Their website is very active. I mean, if you go to their website, by the time you flip over their website for two minutes, a small box will come there asking you, do you need to chat with somebody? And I personally, that is how I get to know them. I was in their website flipping when I heard about stem cell and I was searching and I went to their website and that small box came and asked you, hey, do you want to chat? Do you need help? And that was just where I typed. By one hour down the road after i typed that an email was sent to me because there they'll tell you your name your email address and you get that an email was sent to me and before i know it i have a case my i have a, a, a care coordinator before i know it we are on whatsapp and they are very reachable they have whatsapp which makes you easy communication with them wherever you are in the world i mean it's so easy the process and they, they help you through and they stay here is amazing you have food served to you. I mean, the services, the people are just so overwhelmed, welcoming. Like they are so welcoming. You sometimes like feel like, no, don't do it. I want to do it. But before you even, they are even doing it. And for COVID, don't be worried. You don't even go out. They have, you are in their facility and in their care from the beginning to the ending. They make sure that your stay is as smooth as smooth can get. So don't even worry if it's not yet in your country if you have a child i'll tell you right now do not hesitate to contact them after this live i will go on this live page i will put in their website for everybody who wants to to get there and if you feel and you can also messenger me if you feel like you don't you can go to the website you have a hard time feel free to send me a text on messenger and i will send you a number to a coordinator that you can talk it's a whatsapp number you can get hold of them directly i make this live because i want doctor to talk to people themselves because sometimes it's not my my explanation will not be your <laughs> like they can never be the same no matter how i try but I hope that this hope you gave me, the hope you gave me is not a hope that I could keep it for myself. When I came here, the little, the, the little things I've seen so far with my son, the little improvement I've seen so far, I could only ask myself one question. Why did I not know this long time ago? And for that question, I decided to spread this news as news can be spread. Reason is we didn't know it because nobody have talked to us. We need to be having, and everybody who is watching this live, please share it. You never know 
who will tumble over the life and you will change a child's life, a mother's life, a father's life, a sibling life, just by them knowing this information. So please, my brothers and sisters, my women, women, hey, please share this life. We need as many mothers to see this video as possible because I am a, I am somebody who believes every woman needs to have peace of mind. Absolutely. And as a mother with a child with disorder, with disability, it's heartbroken to know that there's an information like this and mothers don't know, which is why I make this life. So my sisters, please, my mothers, please, Share this information as much as you can. Doctor, before I leave you, Grace, I know it's about one hour for you to go. You are a busy man. Can you just tell what other things? I know we've we'll talked about autism. We'll talk about cerebral palsy. What other things can people expect or can get from Neurogen? So uh, basically, uh, Neurogen treats what we call incurable neurological disorder. So in children, apart from autism and cerebral palsy, there is intellectual disability, okay. Uh, then there is, you know, delayed developments. Uh, then there is Down syndrome. So these are all neurodevelopmental disorders that we can treat. Uh, then in children, we have a condition called muscular dystrophy. Uh, this, uh, in one particular type, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. All these children, all these little boys, they die by the time they're 25. There's a hundred percent death rate. We have treated almost 2,500 of these, and we are saving their lives. They are now living way beyond into their 30s. So that message to muscular dystrophy patients is very important because that's life-saving. These kids otherwise die, you know. So we are doing that. Then in adults, all conditions that cause a paralysis, like people who have a spinal cord injury, they have a fracture of the spine, their legs are not moving, their hands are not moving. We're able to get them all back. You know, they're totally paralyzed wheelchair. We get them walking. Then we have children, uh, patients with a brain stroke. There's a brain stroke and one half of the body is paralyzed. You know, we get their function back. They're able to use their hands, again, able to walk. Then in certain, there's a condition called motor neuron disease. In America, it is called ALS, where again, there is a 90% death rate within yeah. five years. And we have treated several of these. And So in motor neuron disease and muscular dystrophy, this is life-saving. These are people who would die otherwise. And with stem cell therapy, they are all living and, you know, like uh, way beyond what would be expected if they are not taking the treatment. So these are all the things <coughs> that we are treating right now. Um, in continuation with some of the things you said, I just like to add uh, just a few bits of advice to my suggestions to you know the parents of children on the autism spectrum. And uh, this is the first thing. First thing is we have to accept our children the way they are. Okay, do not let the world or the world view let you see see our children as less than. Our children are different, not less than. I want to repeat that. Our special needs children on the autism spectrum are different. They are not less than. And why do I say they are different? Because they, although there are some things that they cannot do, there are some things they can do, but there are some things, there are qualities that they have that are extraordinary. And I want to tell you that after we do the stem cell therapy, their extraordinary qualities actually come up. We have seen some amazing, amazing improvements that are, you know, that you can only put under the category of miraculous. I mean, there were children who are not talking at all, who can now speak in eight languages. You know, there, there, there are kids, we, we have a child who could not speak at all, who is now giving tuitions, teaching deaf children. A child who has special needs is now looking after special needs kids. You know, we have children who are brilliant in mathematics. I mean, <coughs> they are very young and seven, eight years old are doing math that, you know, graduate level people do. We have kids that have set up businesses. We've got a child who set up a chemical factory and is making, you know, a huge amount of uh, chemicals from his skills. So all these kids, and I can just go on and on about, once we help them get over their limitations of their disability, what we see then is not a normal child. We see extraordinary qualities in them. And all these children have this extraordinary quality. So it is very important that we stop seeing these children as less than. We see them as different and do not let the rest of the world decide. These are our children. Okay. Thank God you. gave us our, this child, you know, the way the child is. 
we have been given the responsibility to look after this child. Let's do the best that we can. You know, uh, the the second point I want to make is that the management of these kids needs to be a family uh, uh, sort of event in the sense everybody in the family needs to contribute. What we have noticed is the brunt of the care of, of this comes on to the mother. My request to all the fathers, if fathers hear this, so please pass this on to fathers, is that your role is equally important because these boys look to the father for behavior. The mother is there 24-7, but if the father, if the brother, sister, sibling, grandparents, if everybody gets involved, we tend to see far better improvements. So, you know, the family is the winning team here. You know, like in football or cricket, it's a team that win, wins matches. So I believe that when the entire family, and this is what I'm seeing, the kids who are doing brilliantly now, who are off the autism spectrum, you know, who are leading, you know, normal or close to normal lives, the whole family was focused, integrated and working together. Also, you know, uh, and there's some simple things like, you know, setting up schedules. What is required is these kids like, uh, you know, a, a standardized scheduled systemic way of living. So you have to organize our life in such a way that everything is set to particular timings. So a combination of discipline and dedication, two things, discipline and dedication, along with patience and perseverance. Okay, If we can do that, we are going to see amazing improvements. All our special needs kids make us proud of them. Okay, As parents, we have parents coming back and telling us there was a time when you know we used to wonder who will look after our child, you know, after us? And I, I'm sure that's a question that comes mm -hmm. in most parents' mind. You know, as long as we are there, we look after our special needs child. Who's going to look after our child after us? And these parents come and now tell us, today we are known as the parents of our child because our child has accomplished so much that people know us as his parents. Oh, what a proud moment that is. A child who we thought would, you know, not be able to take care of himself. The parents are known as... You know, I mean, the parents get known because of the child. Yes. Because so of that is what is possible. Now, what you need to understand is our medical treatment is a small but an important part of that. The stem cell therapy is important. The rehab is important. Uh, the integrative therapies are important, but it's one component. What we do, see, this is a, a this is going to be there for, you know, you'll be here for a week, two weeks, three weeks. You know, it's, it's a focus thing. It's what happens after that at home that will program the brain. So this is very, very important. You know, the main responsibility of programming the brains of these children lie with the family, with the mother. But I would say the fathers need to be actively involved and the whole family needs to be involved. Together, we can give these kids the, the life, the independence and the uh, ability to express their extraordinary qualities if we all work together, family, doctors all together. Thank you so much, Doctor. I will just want to say thank you on behalf of this person who just wrote a text here. Yeah. She says that my kids made huge improvement after stem cell therapy at Neurogym. Going to normal school, speaking well, reduce um, PICA, no words to thank you enough. Thank she you. wants you to thank you. So thank you. Thank you all so much for joining this live. Yeah. What a wonderful way to end it. I have no more to say. Dr. Aluk already explained to you guys that we parents should love our children. And remember, they are not less than any other child. We should love them equally. And once there is the parental involvement in the process, the process goes smoother and better. Absolutely. You're so, so with that, I just want to leave you guys that there is hope. Don't give up on your child. I know some people will be asking question of what about if he's too old on all this. He did answer that question and he let you know that there is progress no matter how old the child is. And as a mom who have a son with this, I believe that I would rather take half than zero. I would rather see him improve, even if it is just 50% of what he currently is, than not giving him that opportunity to improve. So don't be limited by the age. Don't be limited. If you have a child, 
I always say, you never know what you get until you try it. So please don't give up on your children. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. Let's keep walking and loving our children and doing the right things to give them the right treatment they need. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Thank As you. always, I love Una. God bless Una. Bye.